Tim Cummings. I'm the director of economic development. It's just uh, one past four on the 25th. I, I'd like to uh, facilitate and start the convening of this very first uh, kickoff meeting of the joint Board of Public Works and Committee on Infrastructure. Um, with that being said, we have some housekeeping items that we need to do to follow some protocols. I'm going to just go through that right now to put us in a good working condition. Uh, and then after that, the first uh, piece of business we need to do is, is elect a chair and vice chair, which I will facilitate that process. So uh, with that being said, as the Director of Economic Development and the staff support to the committee, I think we lost you. As yeah, oh, I'll go ahead and I thought it was just me. Pandemic in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe or listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I can confirm we are providing public access to the meeting via telephone with additional access possibilities by video and other electronic means. We are utilizing the Zoom platform for this electronic meeting. To access the Zoom, please refer to the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 646-558-8656. The meeting ID is 845-7923-6594. Password 747494. The public may also view this meeting via Comcast Channel 16. Providing public notice of the necessary information. Uh, we did do this. We gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting through the public postings. Instructions have been provided on the City of Nash's website, www.nashuanh.gov, and publicly noticed in the City Hall and the Department of Public Works administrative building located at 9 Riverside Drive. Providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there is problems. So if anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-589-3072. You can leave a message or you can email me at cummingst at nashuanh.gov. Both modes of communication will be monitored throughout the entire meeting and we'll be able to respond accordingly. When adjourning the meeting, the meeting, uh, Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting via the phone number mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during the meeting shall be done by a roll call vote. So let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When you hear your name, please state your presence, why you are not physically present for the meeting. Please also state where, uh, whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting which is required by the right to know law. I'm going to quickly go through a roll call right now. When you hear your name, please indicate as such. I'm going to start with the Board of Public Works. Frank Tease. Good afternoon, Director. I'm attending uh, remotely due to the governor's order, and I'm alone in my truck. Thank you. Tracy Pappas. Um, I am here. I'm at home. Um, hopefully nobody will walk through the room, but I have notes on the door. I'm by myself. I'm here due to the global pandemic. Thank you. Kevin Moriarty. Yes, I am present uh, sitting in my office uh, alone. Uh, I am attending remotely due to the uh, pandemic. Great. Thank you. Um, Shannon Choneman. I'm present and I'm attending remotely due to the governor's order and I'm alone in this room in my house. Great, thank you. Typically I know the mayor goes, but I'll hold him to the end because we also now need to recognize the Committee on Infrastructure. First, we'll start with the chair, Mike O'Brien. I am present, I can hear the proceedings and I'm home at Nash or alone. Great, thank you. Um, Vice Chair Tom Lopez. I'm present, I'm attending in my office alone.
and you are uh, participating remotely due to the pandemic. Uh, next, sure. we have yep. Jan Schmidt. Hi, I am present. I'm alone in my office and here because of social distancing. Thank you. Uh, Ernie Jetty. I'm here alone. I can hear the proceedings and I am attending remotely due to the pandemic. Great. Thank you. And then lastly, Dave Tenza. I will note that I have not heard an affirmative from Dave Tenza. With that being said, um, Mayor Donches. I'm present and I'm attending remotely because of the pandemic and I'm alone in the room. Uh, great, thank you, Mayor. So with that being said, it looks uh, as though we have 10 out of 11 members present. We do have quorum. We are in good standing to proceed. Uh, with that being said, the next item of business is, um, and I'm going to share my screen here, is um, a memo I put together. And, um, oh, sorry about that. I, there we go here. So the first item of, uh, of business is uh, electing a chair and a vice chair to steward this initiative. And so uh, my recommendation to the body is that we uh, recommend uh, the chair, Michael O'Brien of infrastructure. And then I believe it would make sense to have the vice chair of the Board of Public Works, Frank Tease, as, as the vice chair of this body. Um, I believe, um, it would make sense to do this to keep a continuity of, of leadership and they could help facilitate uh, the process. So I'm requesting a nomination of uh, Michael O'Brien for chair and then a nomination of Frank Tease for vice chair. I'll nominate uh, uh, Mr. O'Brien for uh, chair. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Kevin Moriarty, I would nominate uh, Commissioner Tease as vice chair. Yeah. So I'm hearing a nomination for Chairman Mike O'Brien and a vice chair of, uh, of uh, Frank Tease. Any, any discussion on the matter? Hearing no discussion on the matter, calling for a roll. I will start with Frank Tease. Well, I certainly fully endorse Mr. O'Brien. I don't know about the guy you've chosen for vice chair, but I'll vote for him as well. I <laughs> Excellent, thank you. I'll note you as voting in the affirmative. Next, we have Tracy Pappas. I will vote yes for both positions. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Kevin Moriarty. Yes, on both. Thank you. Next, we have Shannon Schoenemann. Yes, for both. Yes, thank you. And moving on to infrastructure, we have uh, Mike O'Brien. Yes, for both. Great, thank you. Uh, next, we have Tom Lopez. Yes, for both. Next, we have Jan Schmidt. Yes, for both. Thank you. Next, we have Ernie Jetty. Yes, on both. Thank you. And then uh, noting Dave Tenza, who I do not believe is present, skipping over him. Then we have uh, Mayor Donches. Uh, yes, for both nominations. Great. Thank you. It appears as though with 10 uh, voting all in the affirmative, it is unanimous. We have a chair and a vice chair to steward the, the meeting here. Um, with that being said, uh, technically now, uh, the meeting gavel is virtually turned over to the chair, Mike O'Brien. And Mr. Chair, I'd ask that you allow me to continue facilitating the proceedings of this meeting as we have a robust agenda. And there's a couple other business items I'd like to discuss. Uh, yes, I do. I see we have item E to uh, discuss next. So yes, uh, without objection, Director Cummings, the meter is, uh, meeting is yours. Thank you, sir. So next, moving on, we have um, on my agenda here, which I'm about to pull up. Um, 
Hopefully everyone can see my screen now. I wanted to give everyone just a little orientation as to why we're here today. So um, just to provide some background over the last few weeks, as it appeared as though the Burke Street property was going to be sold and it looks imminent, the question arose as to what the official process would be to construct a new DPW building. And after consultation with the legal department and in working in cooperation with the DPW administration and then my office, over the last few weeks, we learned that it's actually a pretty explicit process laid out in the in the charter. And by way of background, I'll make sure this memo is made available through the minutes um, and, and sent to everyone. I use this just really to help guide and facilitate this meeting. So uh, per the charter and under uh, paragraph 60, which speaks to the general powers and duties of the of Board of Public Works, it's highlighted at the end that says, the said board, which is speaking to the, the Board of Public Works, and the Lands and Buildings Committee, which we know is the Infrastructure Committee of the Board of Alderman, jointly shall direct the construction of all buildings, erect, alter, remodel, or change for the use of the Public Works Department, and no building shall be erected, altered, or remodeled, or changed unless the plans, therefore, have been previously approved by the, by the Board of Public Works. So with that being said, I thought it would be wise to bring this body together jointly moving forward. It's my recommendation that we convene this body as needed to jointly govern the business of the construction of the, of the uh, new building, but to do it more, expi more expeditiously and to uh, help facilitate the process. What I believe would be a good thing to do is develop a small working group that would work more intimately on the project. So um, what I would like is to develop a, a working group and I'm, I'm recommending that we have five members of this working group, um, two of which from the Board of Public Works um, and then three of which being from the, the Infrastructure Committee. Um, and you know, due to the fact that um, both Commissioner Tees and Commissioner Moriarty have been um, working on this project for uh, a long time, and I know it's near and dear to them, and they're the most closely aligned to it, it would make sense to, to ask that they be part of the working group. And then additionally, I would recommend that the, uh, that the leadership of the infrastructure committee, which is um, O'Brien, Lopez, and Schmidt, be the three members of the of the working group, uh, with Chairman O'Brien, Vice Chairman Lopez, and then Secretary Schmidt uh, rounding out the, the working group. And so it's my understanding that per practice, the chairs of the respective committees can appoint subcommittees. And so I want to make sure that this is with uh, the, uh, your approval. Um, but I am recommending that we have um, a working group of five people as I as I've any Tim, I'll can I just right. can, yep. can I just ask for some clarification? So, um, even though there will be a working group, um, decisions will still be made by the the uh, full uh, boards, correct? That's correct. Cool. So, and okay. and thank thank you, Lisa, for making that clear. Um, so this this is advisory only to just help work through the issues. Um, the official body that would have approval is the joint body that we are currently meeting as right. Um, I, so with that being said, I'm hopeful that we can move in this direction to keep moving this project forward. Um, and I, I, I'm not hearing any, any, uh, other questions or comments or concerns, I guess, uh, Mr. Chair, I wanted to check in with you at this point and just make sure you're okay with me moving on to miscellaneous housekeeping items that I'd like to discuss as well. If I may, Director Cummings, uh, it's not an official position, but however, uh, every good committee does need some form of clerk. And if I may uh, have uh, uh, Alderman Jan Smith as our de facto uh, clerk of these uh, proceedings, it, it does give a, a central base without objection. Can, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt. That's why, that's why I haven't asked my question. 
Is it okay? Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I think the closing was supposed to be imminent in December 2019. And then I, we, we keep changing the date. Do we, I, then I, it, it seems like every month we change the date. Do we have, has it closed? No, it has not closed. Do you have a date for this building to close on? I we're thought initially it was May 12th. It, uh, we're working towards getting it closed. Originally it was uh, May 27th and speaking with the uh, actual, the owner, uh, the prospective purchaser of the building yesterday, we are hoping to get it closed the first week in June. Okay, so thank it is, you. So it is imminently happening. Thank you. So, so anyway, so with all that being said, I just think it would be good for us to uh, put a process together that would allow for us to move this project forward um, as expeditiously as possible, as I mentioned earlier. Um, one of the goals that I hope that we all agree to and come out of this meeting with is that we look to try to start construction for spring of, of 22. Any other questions or comments at this time? I do have a question, Tim. Yes, sir. Uh, this probably goes more to uh, uh, Chairman O'Brien. Um, what you just suggested about the subcommittee makeup should that not be put into a motion since uh, every action needs a motion. I just want to make sure we're, uh, we approve that. I, I would prefer it to be a motion and yep. I would like that. I just want to also make sure I'm not breaking protocol because I know separately the two bodies have the power to appoint subcommittees at the chair's discretion. However, I think because it's a joint body and just to have clarity on this matter, I would welcome if a motion was made right now to just affirm what I said. And if I may, Director Cumming, I uh, totally agree. It would make it a lot cleaner. So uh, the chair would entertain such a motion if should uh, a member would like to make it. Uh, Ms., uh, Commissioner Moriarty, would you like to make that motion? Yeah, I would make that motion. Um, I don't know if you would like me to reiterate it or just, um, Tim, what you have written down on your outlet there, that, that made sense to me, the rationale. A motion, uh, excellent. Uh, for, so, so, a motion for a subcommittee of five members, uh, two being from the Board of Public Works and three being uh, from the uh, Infrastructure Committee. And if I could take it a step further, uh, Commissioner Moriarty, to also outline and name them to be um, uh, Commissioner Moriarty, Commissioner Tease, Alderwoman Schmidt, Alderman Lopez, and Alderman O'Brien. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, any uh, discussion on the motion? Seeing no further discussion, uh, Director Cummings, could you still act as clerk uh, till, uh, uh, you know, Alderman Schmidt does get the proper paperwork. Can you please call the roll, please? Absolutely happy to. I'm here all day and night. Um, we have, uh, starting off with Board of Public Works, uh, uh, Frank Tees. Yes. Uh, Tracy Pappas. Yes. For, uh, Kevin Moriarty. Yes. Shannon, Sh Shannon and Shoneman. Yeah. Uh, moving on to infrastructure, uh, Michael O'Brien. Yes. Tom Lopez. Uh, Director Cummings, uh, I had conversations earlier with uh, Alderman Lopez. He does have uh, another commitment that he needed to attend to. Thank, thank you. Uh, skipping over Tom Lopez, moving on to Jan Schmidt. Yes. Thank you. Ernie Jetty. Yes. And then noting Dave Tenza is not in attendance. Lastly, will be Mayor Donches. Uh, yes. Thank you. I believe we have eight, eight votes in the affirmative. The motion passes. 
unanimously with those members present. Um, lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, and again, I just want to refer back to my memo, mainly more for discussion purposes, and I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. I just want to talk about the culture and the norm and how we foresee the administrative um, matters uh, unfolding as time goes on, basically developing some norms or cultures within the within this joint body, which it's its own separate body of uh, two, two separate public bodies within the city of Nashua. So um, I'm sure there's some various questions that one may arise as you, you know, you're technically thinking about how Director Photo and I are gonna um, administer this, uh, this body, but essentially what we're hoping to do is um, have, have the meetings, uh, one, be public, just for the record, these will both be public meetings, the working group and the full body. Notice will be given prior, adhering to all the statutory obligations and agendas will be provided. Minutes, and this was brought up earlier, so in working through some of the technical details, um, what uh, we had discussed in preparation for today is making sure it's understood that during joint body, so under an official meeting like this, there would be verbatim minutes taken. However, during the working group uh, meetings, which is uh, advisory, there would be minutes, but there's no expectation that uh, that verbal minutes, uh, verbatim minutes rather, would be would be taken. It would be uh, meeting our statutory uh, requirements. Can, may, uh, may, I, may I make a question or comment on that? Of course, yes, please. Okay, so I I, I will say um, I was I think I was the only person who voted against Burke Street because we didn't have enough information, and as it turned out, that cost was prohibitive. Um, but when we asked for updates, I really don't feel like I, I don't know that we got any minutes. And and if if we're going over budget, I I really hope that we do that each of these boards and the Board of Aldermen get minutes after um, after each of these uh, after, after each of these meetings of this of this joint board. So we kind of know what's going on. So it's not right at the end we find out, you know, that it's going to be way more than we had anticipated. I, you know, I, I think that that's may have been what was missing. Um, in, in you know in, in the Burke Street project, so you know I, I understand that you don't have the um, you know the, the resources to be able to do verbatim minutes for for, for um, this joint meeting, but I, I, I really hope that we're we, we're more informed than we were on the Burke Street project because I, I really thought that the information fell short. That was that was my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, th th thank thank you. Um... And yes, you will receive minutes of the working group meeting of any official uh, motions made that would again be advisory only to the official uh, body that has jurisdiction over this, which is this, this joint. Um, so, so relative to staffing support for this joint body, I, uh, myself and Lisa Photo will be will be working to make sure we provide the administrative support. Uh, the joint committee will be televised as it is right now, but the working group meetings will not. Now, with all that being said, these will be public meetings, uh, but the, the, the televised portion would only be the, the joint committee. Uh, location, so we've talked about when we meet in person again. The idea is that we will meet um, um, at Nine Riverside um, when, we, when we meet officially as a, as a group again. Uh, we will provide a hybrid option as best as we can, um, and we will obviously try to make all uh, all accommodations possible. Uh, needless to state, we will endeavor to adhere to all the right to know requirements. Um, for the most part, it's going to be my role to facilitate these types of meetings, and um, I'm happy to continue doing it as, as the board or this body uh, likes. Um, we're developing a distribution list. If anyone would like to be on the distribution list so they receive notice, and that goes for anyone that's here today or anyone who's listening on or, or watching on TV, 
happy to add you to the distribution list. All I ask is that you email me at cummingst at nashuanh.gov and we will get you on the official email distribution list so you can receive uh, notification. I'm asking everyone to keep a learning mindset when using uh, the Zoom technology platform. It's a newer form of communication. And I know, I, I know we're all getting um, used to it still. With that being said, I do ask that everyone turn on their video when possible. It is, it is much easier for us to work as a body when we can not only hear you, but see you it makes for a more productive meeting. When you're not speaking or participating officially, please keep yourself on mute. It will help keep crosstalk to a minimum. Uh, finally, everyone's comments, thoughts, and ideas are valued. We want everyone to participate. We ask that it be done in a courteous manner. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I try to run and facilitate meetings in a very casual and an informal uh, nature. So that's the type of tone I'm going to try to set for this, for this type of meeting. I think it worked very well when we did uh, another building project that I was involved with. And I'd like to continue it uh, as we move forward with this, with this project. So um, Mr. Chair, those were just some administrative matters I wanted to quickly highlight and, and put out there for the for the group. I'm going to stop sharing my screen as I know I've taken probably too much time uh, on the agenda this evening and I know we have a presentation by our architect and so uh, with that being said uh, Mr. Chair uh, and if it's the pleasure of this body I'd ask that we move on to the next agenda item which is uh, a presentation of the current design and I am asking for approval of, of the design of the of the building. Uh, thank you, Director Cummings. As uh, Director Cummings stated, next on the agenda is a presentation from HKT. Uh, the presentation will be on the design of the uh, DPW facility. After the presentation, and there'll be a, a discussion, and then a motion will be taken to approve the design as presented by HKT Architect. So without further ado, uh, I will now uh, encourage uh, uh, who's from H. Janet, Janet Slamet. Thank you. I, I I don't mean to get so familiar, but if I may call you Janet, thank you. Please do. Please do. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Janet. I will now, uh, Janet, encourage you to uh, brief this uh, joint committee. Thank you. Uh, Tim, can I present? Have you made me a presenter? Okay. I have you. You're all set to go. Thank you. Okay. And let me know if you uh, cannot see it. Um, I put it into slide uh, slideshow meet. Okay, uh, can everyone see that? Um, any comments? Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to make this as uh, brief as possible and, and to uh, let you know that um, you've seen this work before. Um, it has, um, has been discussed and, and I can't advance this for some reason, I'm frozen. Oh, there it is, okay. So um, you've seen this work before, um, nothing is new or changed from the last time, but it has been a while. So I wanna go through it with you. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about the process of our work to date. Uh, we did a pre-design process, which included um, finalizing the space needs that was gonna be, what spaces were going to be included in the building. We also prepared preliminary options for the placement of the, the building we're talking about now, the current building and the administrative building and any other future buildings on the site. Um, we completed multiple options for the interior building configuration as well as exterior finish options. And um, we did those options in conjunction with the DPW staff, both uh, leadership and, and staff. Uh, they were able to review things and comment. We did many uh, multiple iterations of it. So they're very familiar with what we were doing and why we were doing and trying to get the relationships correct. Uh, so we, after that was approved, we completed a, a schematic, what we call schematic design based on that preferred lot layout. And that included architectural, civil, landscape, structural plans 
and mechanical electrical plumbing fire protection narratives, a pretty standard package for schematic design. Um, we uh, sent those documents over to Harvey Construction, who's the CM on this project, who provided um, the preliminary cost estimate. So that was the initial process. Um, the first thing that we talked about was space needs programming. The building um, was supposed to be around 25,000 or so square feet. It ended up being approximately 25,445 square feet. And the building includes um, shared public spaces um, for the public primarily, customer service points, things like that. Um, the operations, the people that are actually uh, working at the DPW and um, shared employee spaces, locker rooms, uh, personal protective um, equipment, storage rooms, lunch rooms, things like that. Um, administrative offices for uh, both uh, the administration and engineering departments, um, uh, engineering and um, you know cubicles, uh, a few offices, meeting library, printer plot, boiler rooms, typical engineering spaces, and then building support. And we put um, anything that involves vertical circulation, stairs, elevators, mechanical, electrical spaces, all that into that. And that makes up the program for the building. Um, the next thing we did in conjunction with planning that is we began to look at the site options and we worked with our um, consultants on this, this pink box. And I'm gonna try to highlight um, some of this for you. So this pink box right here that I'm circling, that is the 25,000 square foot administration space. So you're looking at the entire um, site in a much bigger scale, but this is the building we're talking about. And um, so we looked at multiple options. This was the alternative that uh, best met the needs of the operations, which was location was in line with the new public entry. So we're, we're bringing in a new road there. This is the existing road up here. Um, the future building and your locations are highlighted in red. So we wanted to make sure that whatever happened in the future, um, that we would not, anything we did in the current building would not compromise the future. So we kind of um, noted that, and that's in red. And then the current site uses in green, this is um, the recycling center and this is the fire training tower. And then, and then we also noted that there could be other uses of the site further um, further south on the property, which is highlighted in blue. So that was the preferred scheme. After we came up with that option, we did a, a series of long-term planning options. So again, to make sure that nothing we did this time would affect any future work. Uh, the the long-term planning was what we did in the programming several years ago. We looked at all of the buildings, all of the um, different divisions, departments of the DPW, and we came up with program. And they included things like the maintenance department, vehicle storage, the shops, um, the wash bay, and all these um, products that support the, the operations of the building. And we did three options. Um, there was one here, um, and then a second one, um, a different configuration. And what we were testing here was, um, if, you know, if there a change was made and we really wanted to do something different with this site plan support different options. And then we did a third option here. So what we demonstrated in this that um, the DPW had a lot of options for the rest of the site and the rest of the remainder of the program as we move forward, um, which, which um, helped us in our um, making our final decisions about how the building was gonna lay it out. So we went from this little paint box to an actual building this is in two scales. So here is some planning, the road in, future uh, current and future programming, the existing buildings, and then any kind of building that went behind it, um, they're, they're represented as, as dash lines or square boxes. It really didn't matter, but the plan was that whatever we did um, would not impact the future. We emphasized the entry sequence, the parking limitations, and the um, simple landscaping for the building, providing buffers to the landfill and also that made sure that we were always enhancing air quality through anything we did. So this was the building as it sits on the site. From there, um, and while we were doing this, this is simultaneous, we were working on the floor plans and these are the things we worked in conjunction with the, um, with each of the department um, overhead leadership and staff. Um, you've seen these before, but I'll go through it. It's a, it's a very simple building, it's a rectangle. You sort of enter in the center of it where there's a common lobby space, customer service points, or um, if you are moving into it for a conference, if you're a public member or into the major multi-purpose room, you can go through this door. Um, and there, all of these things that are sort of colored white or not colored in or, or operation support spaces, uh, locker rooms, um, 
things like that, mechanical rooms. So there's a there's an open workspace on the first floor for customer service and a multi-purpose room. And these are foremen. Um, this is a total of about 12,800 or 12,812 square feet, um, including um, this exit here for the multi-purpose room and the egress stair on the second floor and the entry which pop out from that rectangle. Um, this is the upper floor, 12,631 square feet. Um, and, and it has, um, so going back, you go, um, you can come in and take an elevator to go up or you go up a stair to the second floor, either or, oops, sorry, I'm going backwards. Um, so when you get to the second floor, you're in the same lobby space. Here's that stair, here's that elevator, and you have another customer service point. That's the engineering department primarily. And if you're going to say, do anything in administration, there's an entry point there. And that's um, most of that is administration on this side. Um, there are uh, multiple meeting rooms. There are um, uh, support spaces for the employees. There's um, archival uh, and file storage. Everything has been planned into it uh, so that when this building is done, it will handle the administration uh, going forward. We did multiple elevations and we were working to make sure that um, we were building the most cost efficient uh, building using materials that would be cost efficient, but also hold the test of time. Um, this is a, going to be a heavy, it is a heavy duty site. Um, it has a lot of trucks on and, and you don't, you know, you don't build buildings that aren't going to be able to take a little bit of wear and tear. Um, masonry is a, a very good option. And so um, we're looking at a, a, a masonry building. Uh, here's that center entry point. This is the little vestibule on one side and the stair on the other. Um, and, and, and it looks uh, at this point, it looks like this. Um, this is a red during it. In, in three dimensions where you see the entry point on each of these and, uh, and, and the buildings. Uh, so the front of the building and the sides have windows because um, they are not going to have a building behind them. But if you did notice in the back of the building um, on the upper floor, there's very few windows, um, a few windows because there's it, in the future, there may be a connector to another building and we wanted to make sure that we prepared this back wall so that it could take um, a, another future building. And after this, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is our design next steps in our timeline. Um, we're going to be, as um, Tim pointed out, making presenting updates to the Joint Committee on Public Works and Infrastructure. Um, we're gonna be coordinated with Harvey Construction to remain on budget. Um, we're going to create a schedule for completion of the documents and, cons uh, and construction. And our proposed timeline with this May, May June restart is to complete the construction documents for bidding in approximately 24 weeks. Um, and then we'll, um, in that 24 weeks, we'll be finalizing the design, we'll co coordinate the work of the design team, updating the estimates, and coordinating with uh, city boards as needed to obtain permits. All standard work um, for a construction project. We're gonna bid a project in approximately four weeks um, and go into construction next spring of 2022, uh, approximately 10 months of construction. So early 2023 will be our occupancy. <clears throat> um, that's it for me. I'm uh, Any questions, I can go back in time to um, any of the images if you have questions. I had a question. Uh, thank thank you. Chair. Yes, I was just going to say I'm I'm seeing Frank tease with a question, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Director Cummings. Uh, thank you for that refresher. It's nice to see that building again and um, see what you know the potential could look like. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, including uh, the the sale of that building, which hopefully does occur sooner than later, but. Um, I did have a question, um, Janet, with respect to material costs, and I'm pretty connected to the wood industry, and I know that they've seen, in some instances, prices tripling, and it's my understanding that all materials across the board, because everybody's, I guess, been locked up for the last year, and they've decided they wanted to improve their house or move or whatever it is, and I'm wondering, um, while in the wood industry, they say that over the next several months, those prices should normalize again as the supply chains um, are able to catch up. What is the impact to our project with respect to the plans you've given us in the initial uh, budget 
and the strains on materials and um, will we see a decrease in those prices over time and maybe even have a, a, a cost savings, dare I ask? Um, I'm going to, I can't speak to this. Carl DeBois is on from Harvey and, you know, he's the, he's the money man here. Uh, we are seeing incredible um, uh, cost fluctuation right now. And we are hoping to see a stabilization in those prices uh, uh, sort of by the time you're going out to bid, hopefully. Um, so we're going to see hopefully a normalization and back to normal escalation factors that, you know, anybody pays for the price of an increase. Um, and I think Carl's taken into consideration um, those numbers. Uh, certainly in last year's bid uh, or estimate, he was looking at escalation. Uh, but he, you know, we, no one has a crystal ball on this one that's been, that's anything other than cloudy right now. Um, so um, I think that it's a, uh, um, a bit unknown right now, but we are, again, we are looking for stabilization going forward. Carl, do you want to comment on more about the cost? Well, thank you, Janet. I, I think you summed it up quite nicely, honestly. I mean, 41 years of doing this, I have never seen a marketplace as volatile as it is right now. We are looking at the last SD estimate that we put together uh, quite a few months ago, try to get that updated for everybody to see where we are. As Janet said, we don't have a crystal ball uh, moving forward. Um, Mr. Tees, I'd like to think that it's all gonna come back to normal, but I can't even define normal today in 2021 between COVID and everything else. Um, not only do we have a, a, you know, we're wrestling with uh, escalations across, the, across every sector of the market. More importantly, it's coming down to being able to get your hands on those materials. Uh, there's a shortage of, of a number of things I'm hoping that while this project is under design, that the supply and demand balance out and things get back to, let's say, what we used to consider normal in, in this industry. Uh, it, it's, it's incredibly volatile. It has been since March. Uh, everybody's blaming it on COVID and, and sometimes wondering if some manufacturers aren't just jumping on the bandwagon. But again, not having a crystal ball, not knowing where it's going. We are asking right now what the impact would be on today's market. Uh, ultimately, my goal with a spring start would be to put this out on the street uh, in the December, maybe January timeframe, be able to get this thing awarded uh, with the blessing of, uh, of the committee, uh, make our awards and get everything lined up so that we have ample time to get materials. I could tell you your 10 month construction, start, uh, construction duration, maybe 12, and that's just based on getting materials at this point in time. But we're going to track it uh, ongoing from here on out for you. Uh, we can report as uh, it was raised and giving the proper information as we go along. We'd be happy to share that information with you. Um, let us do our homework here. And at the next committee meeting, we should be able to have something for you that we can present. Mr. Chair, if I may, a second question to that, please. I think you said yes. Um, I was just going to, uh, Mr. Chair, you're on mute, just so you know. Thank you. Yes, a follow-up is in order. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I So I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to call you Carl, so you can call me Frank. Thank you. Thank um, you. The um, I just think our group should be mindful of the fact that we had a budget of X to build a building of 25,000 square feet. And it just doesn't seem reasonable that if prices are up by 30, 40%, we obviously can't build that same building. So I think as a group, we should talk about that at some point and decide, are we gonna modify the construction? Are we gonna hit the prices go down? You know, what is it we're gonna do? We just should make that an agenda item and be mindful of it because we don't have an endless pile of dough. Thank you. Okay, thank um, you. And, and Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure you know that you have uh, Alderman Jetty next in the queue and then Alderman Dowd as well. So, uh... Very good. Thank you, Director Cummings. I'll call on uh, Alderman Jetty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, I, I think you gave us permission to call you Janet. Uh, um, you, you, you may not realize that some of us uh, are not... Uh, uh, I'm not familiar with with uh, when you know when you say we've seen this all before. 
you know, maybe, maybe we have, and I've just forgotten. I know I was a liaison to the Board of Public Works for my first two years of Alderman, and I was familiar with this project at that time. You know, since then, I've kind of lost track of it. I, I remember at the time there was, uh, uh, you know, concern uh, expressed and, um, and, and a, you know, a, a, you know, a, in turn, a, a reaction, uh, you know, kind of a, a promise that uh, that the impact on the local neighborhood would be as minimal as possible. And I, I know when uh, when the you know way back when when the those houses that are on West Holler Street adjacent to the the landfill site were purchased by the city, there were assurances made by the city that that the uh, the residential um, atmosphere or look of the neighborhood would be preserved. I know uh, Mayor Donches was an alderman at the time and was, was a champion for the local residents about that issue. Um, now I, I got a quick look at your plans here and I see that um, that uh, you, you're, you're planning on a separate entrance way. Um, a separate road is going to be constructed. I, I don't know exactly, I couldn't catch exactly where that was going to be located. Um, but, you know, I thought, you know, you know, we were talking about the, uh, the entrance to the landfill. Uh, you know, there's, there's talk about a traffic light uh, being put into that intersection. And, and now I see you're, you're uh, planning on a separate road altogether. And, um, uh, and it looked like this two-story building was going to be fairly close to the property line. Uh, so I, I just got a quick look. So I, I'm not sure what I'm saying is accurate, but I'm wondering what about the impact on the, the adjacent residential homes, uh, you know, what this, uh, what the view out of, out of their back windows is going to be of this two-story building. Is there, is there, is there an effort to, made to, to landscape it in such a way that the building is going to be pretty much hidden from view. Um, like, so that, that's one question. I, if, if I, I have other questions that I'd like to pursue, but that, that's my first one. Uh, Janet, uh, do you want to answer that question? Hello, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I, I don't know what happened. I'm on my phone. <laughs> I just lost all connection. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, Tim, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear you? Uh, is this Janet? Yeah, it is okay, Janet. Great. I have no idea. I think Comcast went out in our area. Um, so <laughs> um, sorry about that. So I apologize. Well, uh, Alderman <laughs> Jetty does have a, a pending question for you. And okay. what it is, uh, when we first got into this, there, there was concern with the adjacent properties and sure. somewhat of a buffer. Uh, but he's now asking, uh, will there be any type of landscaping or any type of concerns that uh, this project would have to, to isolate that building from the uh, uh, West Hollow Street view? Okay. So the current plan is um, where the road comes in, the, the city owns that property. And, um, and so that's sort of the placement of it. I think the buildings are on Park Street and I'm, I don't have, I, I don't, don't have a drawing here that I can measure, but I can approximate um, that we are, uh, one, two, you know, probably, uh, probably 180 to 200 feet at least away from the building is from any of the back structure. Um, and there are some wooded areas there already. And um, the, the initial plan shows for us to add some trees and we can certainly discuss whether we need to, uh, to uh, bolster that tree line or planting line to uh, provide it. I think that's why we put the building there, why we made the gesture to put uh, a very positive space so when the community does look through those trees that they see a, a, a nice looking building with planting. So we can look at that. So is that helpful? Um, so. Alderman Jetty? Uh, yes. Uh, also, the location of this new road, you know, that's going mm -hmm. to access the building, 
And where is that in relation to the, the adjacent homes, the, the homes in that area? Um, Alicia, do you want to, or, or Dan, how, do you want to take that location? But it's, you know, it's sort of to the, um, sort of the north of, I don't know the address of the one house that, uh, or the building that's right there. Um, but it's, can you describe the property to the alderman? Yeah, so the Alderman Jetty, this is the same plan that we had when we had that neighborhood meeting um, at the landfill. That hasn't changed. Um, right. It is close to where it's between, sort of where the uh, Brown property was at one time, where the entrance will be a, a, a probably a, a, a little bit closer to the to the other landfill entrance. But it, it's it's going to. We are not going to be doing um, anything with the the Brown and Docus properties that are in the front. So that that land will remain there. So I think that the, the building will really be pretty much um, screened by by that existing land in the front. Um, we we've always said that we wouldn't we wouldn't touch that property. Now while there might be a little bit of parking encroaching on that, that property will remain um, with with the trees and and uh, natural as it is. So. It, it, it will just be a road going in there. And that, and that is for the, really for um, the convenience of the residents so that they're not, they're able to um, go into the landfill without crossing, you know, large uh, trucks that, that might be coming out of the site for, uh, for safety reasons. That's really the only reason we're going to. The other, the other advantage for that is if people, there will be a number of people coming for uh, permits and, and other things, um, or, or, or soccer balls or whatever, or signing their kids up for camps, whatever the case may be. Um, so it's a, it's a lot more convenient um, uh, for the residents to be able to have access that is not the same as, as the landfill. So that, that's really can the you, purpose of that entrance, but I don't think it, it's not going to be a huge impact. Can you see the image again? Is it back up for everyone? Yes, okay. yes it is. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay, Comcast. Okay. Uh, thank you, Janet. Alderman Jetty, okay. uh, you all set with your question? Uh, yes. If I well, uh, if I could just comment further. Now, now that I see the image again, it um, you know, I, I when when, uh, when this was shown to the neighborhood, I don't remember this um, you know, where this big red arrow is uh, leading right up to the building. Yeah, I don't. That's the new roadway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't remember seeing that. You know, I, I'm not saying it wasn't there, but I never noticed it. Uh, I didn't realize that there was going to be a separate entrance. Um, and so it looks, you know, there's a house just to the south of it. Um, this one right here. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it looks like that, that would you know, have an, an impact on them. Uh, so m my other question is: you you mentioned this um, this building having uh, you know locker rooms. Um, is this are you is this building going to be uh, uh, you know just housing the uh, the people that work at the landfill now, or or is this building designed to accommodate um, you know the the eventual moving of the, the street department to this location and the parks and recreation department is that is that build, uh, is this building going to be large enough to do that or is this just yes for no the all the majority this is administration and engineering um this will be all parks and recreation um right. much oh, the oh. the street department um there will the administration staff will be there um, we can't move everybody, obviously, because the equipment needs to stay there, um, and we and we won't have a garage. Um, but it, the the administrative staff will be moved over, and then all of salt, and then all of solid waste. So uh, the only folks that will not be there at this time will be wastewater and um, the frontline staff, uh, the, the mechanics, truck drivers, and operators at the street department. Everybody else, everybody else will be um, located at this site. Okay, and, and one last question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as far as the, the siting of this building, has, has this gone, you know, will this go before the planning board and, or has it gone yet? It, it will go before the planning board, it has not gone yet. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Uh, again, the, this, thank you, Alderman Jetty. In the queue, we do have uh, Alderman Dow. Alderman Dow. Yeah, it's just a, a few comments. Um, one is that uh, when we bought those properties, uh, we said we wouldn't build any buildings out that way right on the street, but that road has been on the plan since we started and uh, also a tra full traffic study was done by Wayne Hudson uh, relative to this and and the uh, it was determined that uh, the separation of the traffic was the best thing for the traffic on on that street so um, makes much more sense to have that separate driveway and I don't think it'll be impinging on any of the neighbors uh, won't be extensive traffic. Uh, the other thing is, uh, it was a question about the price. At some point after um, uh, Harvey does their pricing on things, there will be a guaranteed maximum price. Correct, Carl? Correct. At some point. And once there's a guaranteed maximum price approved by this committee, then Nothing can change uh, additions, deletions, or changes in price without it being approved through a change order through this committee. Uh, I've been involved in 12 school building projects, uh, three of them brand new buildings, and a couple of major undertakings. Uh, so we've been through this process a number of times over the next last 15 years. So uh, I did promise Alden O'Brien I would uh, assist, as well as direct a photo, assist in where I could in, in guidance. Uh, I deal with Harvey Construction every day <laughs> uh, on these projects, uh, and as well as I think everybody on city staff. In fact, when we were on, I just got a call from Celia Leonard and the legal office who are working on something on the new school. So. Um, there's a lot to building a building and uh, uh, I will try to lend whatever expertise I have to help make sure it gets finished on schedule and under cost. Okay, I, I would like to Thank say you. that I'm very appreciative uh, to uh, Alderman Dowd, uh, your level of experience with the construction uh, you'll be like an angel on our shoulders uh, when we have those questions so thank you for showing interest into this. Uh, project. Uh, if there's no further comment, I am. If, if, I, if, 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 if I have one uh, comment. Yes, Mr. Chair, I is that okay? you, uh, Commissioner Pappas, please. So I will say I, I was told that there was a um, some sort of a traffic study done and we got a verbal but I asked several times for a written traffic study because I think once you're, we're going to look at something, we really need to read it. And that was never available. I know that I had asked um, in November 2019 and I, I never got, a, a, you know, a, 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 the, the, the written traffic study um, for that. The other issue is with this site is that we're, you're saying, okay, we're, we're going to do the office building, which is the most inexpensive part of getting our facilities done. Long-term plan, kicking the can down the road for some other board of aldermen to have to figure out. We never got a price for what it's going to cost to um, move Parks and Rec and um, the street department down there. In November, I, I looked through the meeting minutes, November 2019, off the top of um, someone's head from um, from Harvey Construction, and, and, and again, v very kind about it, very nice about it. They're saying that 2019 prices. Oh, that's at least another 60 to 70 million dollars. So I will say that I we have never gotten a written copy of the um, traffic report um, that will impact the neighborhood. I know that we do have some board aldermen on this committee. Um, on, on, on these two committees, but some of us represent, every, you know, the, 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 the city at large, and I know Alderman Jetty represents the ward, which, you know, hosts, hosts the landfill. And um, I just have, I have real concern, just like Burke Street, that we've not really done our homework on this issue. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, I, I understand that we have um, 
air quality issues over over at the office on Riverside, but I know that there were the same air quality issues where transit is in transit transit did figure that out the problem is although it won't come from public works money the, if the police department is going to get that building they're going to have the eventually the taxpayers are going to have to pay for that too so those are some of my concerns about the project thank you thank you commissioner pappas uh director cummings if it at all possible <clears throat> since maybe uh a change and it's been a while since we discussed this People have not seen that traffic study. Can a copy be made out, uh, be sent out uh, via email to the Joint Committee, please? Uh, um, uh, Alderman O'Brien, um, yes. I, I just want to mention the traffic study is on our website, um, so it can be viewed uh, by anybody um, that is interested. All right, then. It's, Thank on, you. it's on the Division of Public Works website. Thank you, Director Photo. I strongly can, can I can I ask one more question? Yes, you may, Commissioner Pappas. So the traffic study was only done for the office part. So so the traffic study we had done didn't factor into that eventually we want Parks and Rec and the Street Department there. Uh, no, I, I believe it was, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Engineer Hudson uh, comment, but I believe it was comprehensive, Commissioner Pappas, for uh, in the event that we, we are fortunate enough to, to bring everybody over. But I do want to clarify the only, the only staff that will not be um, in this building will be the street department um, mechanics and and uh, frontline staff like the operators and, and the truck drivers and wastewater. Um, every, everybody else, all the park and rec will be um, uh, moved to this facility. <laughs> all set, Commissioner Pappas? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, I'll just Chairman say- Chairman O'Brien? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Shoneman. Yes, could I um, make a comment? Absolutely. Please. Um, I've, I've made this comment before, um, not long ago, and I would like to reiterate it for the record that um, considering all that we've been through, um, all of us in the last year, um, all of us have, have been required to do some measures of austerity because of um, all the financial um, complexity of the last year. Um, I personally believe that with all the other projects that are going on right now, um, some more fiscally responsible than others, that this project, though necessary, very necessary, I'm I completely understand the need to update the, the public works facilities. I, that's completely legitimate. Um, I don't think this is a good time to push through a project like this. And I know that others will say that interest rates are you know, fabulous and we can't afford not to borrow all this money, but with the Berks Street property not being sold uh, six months down the road um, from when it was originally supposed to be sold, and building costs and very high property taxes still going up. Um, I, I feel strongly that this is not a fiscally responsible project for right now, that maybe we should consider putting it off. That's my feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shoneman. May I, Alderman O'Brien, may I just uh, comment? Yes, you may, briefly? Director Photo. Th thank you. So, um, you know, I, I think that I have shown, you know, in all my years as director that I've been very fiscally responsible, cutting budgets uh, when I needed to, and, and, and I've done that for a number of years. Um, this project is not a nice to have. Our staff deserves safe and healthy working conditions, and they don't have that right now. We've got air quality issues in several of our buildings. We have mold. We have, we have people that are dealing with rodents um, under their desks. We have inadequate restrooms and locker rooms. Um, our engineers are, are doubled up. Our, their, their files are out in the hallway. We are not providing adequate working conditions for our staff. Our buildings are beyond their useful life. Our, many of our staff don't even, they don't even have windows. Um, and this, this project is something that 
that the staff, it's, it, this is not, I've said this before, this is not for me. I don't need a new office. I'm fine with my office. But there are many people who are working in squalor-like conditions, and I've been advocating for this for a long time. This is not something new. This has been going on for a very, very long time. And I don't believe that this project should be and can be put off any longer. Thank you, Director Photo. Uh, if everybody's had their uh, chance to make their particular comment, I am still looking for a motion. Okay, uh, the motion that I would be looking for is to approve the design as presented by HKT Architects. Yes. Anybody, any committee member would like to make that motion? Mr. Uh, Chair, I move to approve it as, as presented, thank you. Okay, uh, we have uh, a motion by uh, uh, Commissioner Tees to uh, approve the design as presented by HKT Architects. Any further discussion on the motion? I have one more question, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Commissioner Pappas. Uh, if, I, so, if, if I may, if I may, if I may, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, you may. may. Thank, thank you. I also want to make sure you know that you have uh, Ernie Jetty looking to say something as well. So you have a oh, I see his hand. Commissioner I, Pappas I, and yeah. Alderman Jetty. I do see uh, Alderman Jetty's hand. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, so, hold on you. Go ahead. So, my question is, I just, I, so all the, all the, tr I, I'm just because I, I've not, I, I did, I never saw the written um, traffic report. I just want to make sure. So, you're saying that all the AFSCME people from Parks and Rec are going over to the to to that new building, and those the, the, that truckload has been factored in. Engineer Hudson, can you confirm that for me? Thank you. Sure, I'd be I'd be happy to. I uh, do, do a refresh myself because uh, the study was done last July, but um, the study addresses uh, you know conceptually two phases. One is the first phase is a twenty five thousand square foot office building, which is you know subject to hand, and then phase two, which is including the long term um, projections, at least for traffic analysis reasons. Um, includes uh, 100,000 square foot uh, vehicle garage. So it is that the study does cover what we would envision, uh, you know, as, a, as an ultimate, uh, you know, full full DPW facility if, if uh, that should come to pass someday. Okay, so, so when, so, so my question is, when the facility opens, I just, I just want, when, when the facility opens, is it, just clarify who's going to be there. Are the ask me people from my understanding is the ask me people and I could be wrong. My understanding was all the ask me people from the street department will be at the street department. I know there are mold and, and air quality issues there. And then I was, my understanding was the ask me people from the parks and rec department would be, would stay over at, at the facility over at Greeley park. No, um, the the only folks that everybody will be brought over to the to the new building, with the exception of uh, wastewater staff and the uh, street department mechanics, operators, truck drivers, masons, um, the folks that need their equipment uh, because we don't have any place to store all of that equipment. That's all. Everybody else, all of park and recreation, all of administration. Um, and engineering and all of solid waste will be in that building and and all of the um, it, all of the administration of the street department will will move over to the new building. So most everybody will be consolidated in, in the new building. Okay, and okay, I, I, I guess when 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 my request would be when you guys continue with the plans um, for the sake of the folks that live near the landfill, if we can try to get an idea as to where the trucks are going to be parked, because they do they do put up with a lot, and you know, as I said, I do represent the city at large, and um, if they think they're getting an office and they're they're getting they're getting a lot more, I, I have concerns for that ward. So those are my thoughts. Thank you, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Commissioner Pappas. Uh, we have a pending motion to approve the design as presented by H. KT Architects, uh, Alderman Jetty, do you have a further discussion on the motion? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I, I, uh, 
I feel uh, you know a little bit uncomfortable, a lot, you know, a lot uncomfortable, uh, you know, approving this, uh, this, you know, the design of this building, especially the site, uh, the siting of the building. Um, you know, I know that, um, you know, I know this has been in the works. I, when I was liaison to the Board of Public Works, I was, you know, well convinced by direct a photo of, uh, of the uh, of the horrible conditions that uh, that her employees are working under and the need for a new building. Um, but I, I, you know, maybe I, maybe the, the you know, the sighting was, uh, you know, it was all conceptual, at least in my memory is that when I was on the board, uh, a liaison to the board, everything was conceptual. I didn't know I was gonna be on this special committee until, I don't know, Friday of last week. So, um, so seeing the plan that uh, Janet put up, uh, you know, it, it's the first time I remember seeing it. And I'm wondering, is there, uh, I don't know how often this committee is going to be meeting, but, you know, is it, is it do we have time to you know, give us a week or so to, you know, to, to get a copy of this stuff and look it over and, uh, you know, and so that I can feel a little more comfortable about, uh, you know what I'm approving, uh, so I, I don't know who could answer that. But is it possible to delay this for? Uh, yes, uh, a week or so? I'm going to refer that to Director Cummings. But first, I would like to say, Alderman Schmidt, you are in the queue, so I see that. But uh, only only wanted to say I've just sent a message to um, uh, Alderman Shetty with all of the data that's available on DPW, including the images and the traffic study. So. It should be available to him in his email today. I uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Alderman Schmidt. Uh, Director Cummings, I, I was going to refer this question to you if you choose to take it. Uh, could a delay end up costing us even more? Correct, Mr. Chairman. So I'm going to implore you to vote favorably on this this evening. This is not a new discussion. We've been talking about this for a while. As we continue to delay this, the cost is only going to go up. And uh, I would like to suggest that this is the beginning of the project. We are at the uh, you know, beginning stages of design. We're gonna have an ongoing continuous conversation to approve upon what we're asking you to, to vote on tonight. Um, there will be some iterations, some adaptions, some improvements, um, but we need to get going. We need to start working and we need to have consensus. Thank you, Director uh, Cummings. May, Any further may, comment on may, the uh, may motion? I, yes, may uh, I speak, uh, Alderman O'Brien? Ald yes. Alderman Jetty, um, may I suggest that um, that perhaps we meet out at the landfill and I, and I can show you exactly where uh, the building would be sited and exactly the you know the area that will be impacted. I think that that will give you uh, a, a better comfort level. But but nothing has changed since we have had that neighborhood meeting. I mean, everything is everything is the same in terms of of impact, um, but I'd be happy to meet you just to show you exactly. We could we could walk it, and I could show you exactly the area if, if you're interested in doing that. Thank you, Director Photo. Uh, Could I respond? Yes, yeah, you no, may. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would welcome that. Um, I, you know, unfortunately, we we can't do that before uh, this this vote is going to take place, uh, and uh, you know. I, I understand, and you know, and, and I, I'm I'm available pretty much any time, uh, Director Photo. So, you know, we could do that tomorrow if you'd like. Um, and I understand the, uh, you know, you know the people, you know, the, the, the people on the Board of Public Works who have been dealing with this on an ongoing basis. Um, and I understand Director Cummings is, you know, has been. You know, wanting to get this going, and uh, I, I understand all of that. But Director Cummings, you know, to be uh, blunt, um, you know, you, you, you told you, you told me that I was going to be on this committee. You invited me to be on this committee on Friday. Um, now you're asking me to vote on a site plan that I'm. You know, it would have been nice to see this ahead of time. I, I understand the need to get going, 
but this, you know, this project has been delayed for all kinds of reasons. And, you know, delaying it another week, I, I, uh, you know, I don't think Harvey is going to come up with a price list uh, by next week. And um, so, so for the, for those reasons, um, I'm not comfortable voting on this tonight. Uh, I'd be happy to vote on it next week, but not tonight. Automagetti, as always, you have the right when it comes to a vote to express your opinion via your vote. I have in the queue uh, Alderman Dowd and Commissioner Tease. I'll now recognize Alderman Dowd on discussion on the pending motion. Yes, I could be wrong, and Diane can uh, correct me, but we're not, or you're not voting. I'm not voting at all. You're not voting on, on construction documents, meaning that they're going to put shovels in the ground next week. I believe this is preliminary design. Um, we do this in the school projects and then things change before the actual approval of the, of the construction documents, which is, okay, now we've all agreed, this is how we're gonna build. And once you start in the construction documents, changes are, are a little harder to do. So there's plenty of time. You're, deliver, you're, you're approving a preliminary design, which starts things in motion. Correct me if I'm wrong, Director Cummings. Director Cummings. Oh, yeah, no, no, Alderman Dowd is absolutely correct. That's that's exactly what we're trying to do today. Thank you, Alderman uh, Dowd and Director Cummings. Uh, Commissioner Tees. So, uh, Alderman Dowd took the words out of my mouth. We're not necessarily voting where the building will sit. We're voting on the type of building we may build. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tees, again, we have a pending motion to approve the design as presented by HKT Architects. Any further discussion on the motion? Alderman Jetty. Uh, I'm sorry, just for clarification, the uh, so we're not approving the site of, of this building at this, with this vote, we're not saying it's going to be located where the, the architect has located it. Is that... Are you saying, am I understanding that correctly? If I am wrong, I'm reading the pending motions to approve the design as presented by HKT Architects. Okay, not, not the siting of the building. I think the site has already been chosen. And uh, uh, perhaps Janet, what would happen if we did change the particular site? Would that mean a major change into some of these plans? Um, can everyone hear me? I'm joining by phone again. Um, yes, we can hear you. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, okay. Um, so the building placement, the actual physical building placement, you know, we could shift, uh, you know, north or south as we need be. We would need to settle it soon because the civil engineers. Uh, and the landscape architects and all the people that contribute to any um, infrastructure, utilities, uh, site placement, they would need to know that sooner than later so that um, that we would get the building in the, loca the correct location. Um, and they've already done some preliminary work. Do I think that's um, irreversible? Absolutely not. And so if, if um, Alderman, um, would, the Alderman would like to go back to the site and look at it again, I don't think that a week um, would um, you know, the shifting of it would um, would hurt us in a week's time. Um, so, you know, again, um, you know, we're we're a little bit flexible with the location. I would caution to say that um, the planning for the future is really critical. Um, so, I had shown you a couple of slides of what could happen in the future. We wouldn't want to um, anything we did or anything we moved purely to answer one question. We wouldn't be able to look at all the other questions. So, if that's helpful. Very helpful. Thank you, Janet. Uh, okay. Any other further comment on the motion? Seeing no further comment, the pending motion is to approve the design as presented by HKT Architects. Will Director Cummings please call the roll call, please? Yes, happy to. Next, we have uh, Commissioner Tease. Yes. Next, we have Commissioner Pappas. No. Uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Yes. Commissioner Shoneman. 
No. Next, we have uh, Chairman O'Brien. Yes. Next, we have uh, uh, Alderman Lopez. I don't believe Alderman Lopez is with us. I'll move on. Next, we have Alderman Schmidt. You're on mute. Yeah. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. And then uh, next we have uh, Alderman Jetty. No. And then uh, next we have Alderman Tenza, who I do not believe is here. And then finally we have Mayor Donches. You're on mute, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I couldn't get unmuted, yes. Thank you, Mayor. So with uh, one, two, three, four, five in the affirmative, and then one, two, three, three in the negative, the, uh, the motion passes. Thank you, Director Cummings. Moving on, we have uh, one more presentation. I would uh, would like to uh, recognize uh, Carl DuBois of Harvey Construction, uh, who will present us with a construction time timeline update. Uh, Carl, are you ready? Thank you, Chairman O'Brien. If I may share my screen. Absolutely. We're bringing up, can everybody see that? No, it looks like a. Bear with me. I've got it open. I just don't know why I can't bring it up. It was on the, t it was on the channel 16 screen. Can you see it? That? That? It was there a second. Of, yeah, it's there now. Okay. On channel 16 screen. This is a pre construction tax, tax, task list that I put together. This is a form that uh, particularly Alderman Dodd is very familiar with and trying to keep everybody on task. This list will get us through what I call pre-construction, uh, through bidding, and then ultimately into awards. From that point, we would develop a full construction schedule uh, and that would be done prior to the issuance of bids so that subcontractors knew exactly what was requested of them and when it was requested. But the list that's in front of you is color coded based on who's responsible, be it the city of Nashua, HKT, or Harvey, the three members of the team. And what I've highlighted in red is what I consider to be what I'm calling uh, milestone dates. And one of the first ones is uh, to complete, I mean, it may be, but we need to hear from the civil engineer that they have all the site survey and topography that they need in order to. Uh, get moving on what they need to do from a civil engineering uh, design portion. And that would be, uh, I had an end date currently of 6-11. I mean, we can modify this based on what the team says. Spent a fair amount of time with uh, Janet going through this to make sure that we were in sync. So I think we're good. Uh, been a lot of discussion. Don't I'm looking to expand the discussion on it. But again, on the traffic improvements, if you notice there's no Nothing really assigned here, it's HKT architects, but I think this goes back to the intersection and what needs to happen, whether there's going to be any off-road improvements. Um, I don't believe there'll be a signalization out in that area, but you know, what do we have to do? So I think there's a little bit of work that has to be done there in order for the civil engineer to proceed. The other two big ones, um, I can tell you we've been held up on a couple of school projects on uh, alteration of terrain and Part of that is what the changes that have gone on up in the state house. Uh, fishing game is now involved with uh, any permitting process that goes on for alteration of terrain. Uh, and it's taken a fair amount of time. Typically it used to take about 60 days to get those approvals. And lately it's, I've seen it go as long as uh, five months. So I have that as a critical path. Same with uh, any sewage discharge uh, permitting that may have to happen. Um, so I was showing that as, as uh, being in the, in the queue. 
Also, formal sign offs of the floor plans, elevation of the master plan. I think we've talked about that tonight. Um, and then it really is going to run through uh, this next section of design. Prior to putting this project on hold with the hold up on Burke Street, uh, we talked about uh, we actually finished a schematic. Uh, Janet finished her schematic design, and we finished the schematic design uh, estimate. Uh, we'll relook at that, get that updated for everybody based on current marketplace. Uh, again, that's all we can do at this point in time. Uh, but her design documents uh, have it taken out to about 820. She needs about 12 weeks worth of time to do that. That's taken here on the timeline, taking it out to 821. Uh, rolling right into construction documents. Um, and at the end of construction documents, which I'm saying it could be 11, 12. There is a little bit of wiggle room in this. Uh, I'd either like to bid this project before the holidays or right after the holidays. If I can get it done before the holidays, that would be fantastic. Um, it's the best time to bid a particular project uh, because everybody's looking to refill their workload for the following year coming up. So it would work out fine. Also having the um, construction started in the spring as Alderman Dow can attest to, uh, it gives us the ample opportunity to make the awards, get through a huge upline process with the architect and engineers, and in particular, get the materials on order and, and in line when we need them to arrive on site. And then I would assume once the bidding is done, we compile a guaranteed maximum price, as Alderman Dow alluded to earlier tonight. Uh, we would present that document to this group uh, for formal approval so that the last part of our contract could be executed, uh, authorizing us to proceed with procurement. Everything else that's on this list, and we'd be happy to do this, are all tasks that need to get done to get to the finish line where we have a completed uh, set of documents. And that, that goes into potentially conservation submission, technical review with, with uh, the uh, planning staff, uh, planning board submission meetings, us filing a notice of intent. You know, I put in here possibly repurposing the bond funding due to the time element. I'm not sure. And even <coughs> can help us hear from the city what has to happen there in terms of reappropriating the funds due to this going on for the sale of uh, Brick Street. Uh, executing our contract, we do have to do a hydrant flow test to determine the water pressure down there for the, for the sprinkler design. Got to get that in line. Selection of data, security, fiber, communication, and have uh, upfront stuff that Janet's engineers are going to have to know what's going in the building and who uh, and what the requirements are. We also have to get the utility companies on notice. Uh, that requires a fir, uh, fair amount of engineering, but we would notify Eversource, Liberty, Comcast, uh, all of them. Uh, about what's going on with the project so that they can, uh, then we can establish work orders and get the needs of this project. <laughs> Other things that'll happen down line, I'm assuming there'll be a commissioning agent uh, that the city would have to solicit proposals for, testing agencies. Um, I know there's been some discussion, I'm not sure it's finalized, but there was some discussion about the, you know, what happens with that. You know, do we develop a project website on the city system for this project? And then obviously getting into whatever would be required for furnishes, fixtures, and equipment. Um, there's also uh, an initial call and analysis has been done, but uh, in speaking with Janet, he'll be going back to their uh, consultants uh, a couple more times just to make sure we've dotted our eyes and crossed our teeth. We'll get into finished color selections, or Janet will, not me. I don't pick colors. Uh, I'll be happy to put in any color you that the team, the team wants. But you'll be looking at finished color selections down the line, and then obviously life cycle cost analysis, which is always important based on the materials and the equipment that's going into the building, how efficient you can get with it. Um, for us, we would have to, we'll be preparing a logistics plan showing you how we would uh, move on to the site. We do this at all the school projects. We've done it with the, uh, with the, uh, Performing Arts Center as far as where we might put a trailer, where we would put the dumpsters. And this goes back to Mr. Jetty's concerns, Alderman Jetty, in terms of uh, we usually like to hide the temporary toilets and the dumpsters. And you know, we keep in mind that 
there are residential people living, that's their homes. So we try to be as, as uh, fly under the radar, as I like to say. So they, you know, not trying to hide it, but some stuff you want to hide, like temporary toilets and the like. So what we prepare a logistics plan that can be shared uh, with the uh, with the neighborhood. I have no problem doing that. We've done that several times with uh, uh, school and the neighborhoods around them. Get everybody familiar with what's going on. We will prepare a comprehensive construction schedule once we nail everything down. We will be developing a, a, a DD estimate when Janet finishes uh, her work. Uh, we'll be putting it out to bid and there's a whole process on that that we'll be talking out. I assume, and maybe I shouldn't, but let's assume for now that it'll be similar to what we've done on, on the school projects. Uh, we can bring everybody up to speed in the future on that. And once it's bid, we'll develop a GMP estimate and that gets converted into a contract exhibit. So there are a lot of things that need to get done, uh, not just by the architect or by the engineer. Some of these fall into the hands of, of city officials and, and leases group to, to assist us on. Uh, so there's a fair amount of work here. Uh, this is fairly simple timeline. Our construction schedules get uh, pretty pretty onerous and, and could be up to you know, a couple thousand items. So these are the tasks that have to go on to get us to the goal line of establishing a GMP for the for the project that would then lead into a, con a uh, construction uh, contract exhibit uh, that would have to be signed, then releasing us getting ready for construction in the spring. I guess I ask if anybody's got any questions uh, moving forward. Um, any questions for uh, Mr. Dubois? And well, you Kyle, it looks like you got off easy. Yeah, I guess so. But if I may just add one more thing. To oh, the, absolutely, please. To Alderman Jetty's concerns, I, I personally would have no issue as Alderman Don knows uh, meeting the neighborhood groups uh, that you represent and just, just to get everybody as the information unfolds do an inform informational meeting to uh, I always felt it was best to get everybody on board early and understand and it's, it's worked out very well on the school projects and I think we could apply some of the same techniques that we did there here. Hey, again, I'll ask any uh, questions of uh, Mr. Dubois of Harvey Construction. Oh, yes, Alderman Dowd. Yeah, just real quick, I found with the new school, uh, keeping the neighbors up to speed on everything that's going on in advance uh, and makes the projects flow easier and makes the neighbors feel much more involved. And uh, uh, we had some initial pushback on the new school, and, and now the people that originally were pushing back are now totally in favor of it. So, um, uh, communications is 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 a good thing as far as the neighbors are concerned. Very good, thank you, Alderman Dow. Okay, uh, basically looking at the end of what we have here on the agenda, I will now. If, uh, yes, if, if I may, Mr. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. So. Uh, just to kind of close out uh, to, uh, the, the conversation uh, this afternoon, um, as you can see, to keep this project on track, there's a lot of work ahead of us. I know Director Photo and I are committed to, to making the timeline as previously discussed, and I just want to reiterate it now. Um, we are looking to try to get under construction for spring of 22. And to do that, there's a lot of milestones and a lot of tasks that we need to uh, we need to accomplish. Um, with that being said, uh, Mr. Chair, we will be looking to convene this group again, um, you know, as needed to move this project along. But more importantly, the working group we just established, I'll be reaching out to everyone to get a meeting going sometime in the next uh, two weeks or so just to get organized and to really move this conversation along and as noted to make sure we're communicating with the with the neighborhood appropriately uh, my last comment is is i was thinking and it's my recommendation that we standardize the time time frame in terms of which we meet i was going to suggest late afternoons on tuesday something like this time period uh, for meeting when we do meet I wanted to put that out to the group. You do not need to respond to that now, 
please email me if that's a concern or a problem for your schedule. But as we need to call this type of meeting, I would be looking to slot it in a late afternoon, let's say 4 p.m. time slot on a, on a Tuesday. Um, those are all the logistical and, uh, and uh, mechanical items I had. I thank everyone for their time this afternoon, and I'm really looking forward to this project. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Cummings. Uh, I would just like to briefly say that uh, I would like to thank all members of the committee for your votes to be chair. I'm very excited to work with Commissioner Tease, Commissioner Moriarty, Alderman Lopez, and of course my good friend, Alderman Jan Smith. Uh, I take this very seriously. We're gonna build a good building that hopefully will last longer than most people in attendance of this. And I think that'll be a compliment to uh, us on what we do here. Uh, hopefully this is a good 50 year plus building that will serve the city well. So again, thank you for everybody on their comments and everything. I thought it was a very productive meeting and I thank you all. What we will do is uh, we'll go until the call of the chair uh, for the joint meeting. Uh, please get back to Director Cummings, as he said, looking at the late afternoons at Tuesdays at 4 p.m. And seeing that with nothing else, I'll call for a, a, a motion. Uh, Alderman Schmidt, do you have uh, a famous infrastructure motion? I move to adjourn by roll call. We have a motion to adjourn by roll call. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? I certainly could. Um, Commissioner Tease? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Commissioner Moriarty? Yes. And Commissioner uh, Shoneman? Yes. And Chairman O'Brien? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Not here just now. Uh, Alderman Schmidt says yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. And Alderman Tenza is not here. That would be a positive yes for all. All right, uh, Director Cummings, I told you she was very good. She does a good job for me on <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Schmidt. Uh, the motion to adjourn passes. Uh, I'll declare the meeting adjourned at 5 39 p.m. And I again thank you all for participating.